All right, everyone, welcome back to another edit of the Sunday Glide. This week, we're going to be doing an in-depth breakdown and run-through of the Slasher Low Pro, a board designed by CJ Nelson and Ian Chisholm. We're gonna be starting off with an in-depth conversation with Ian Chisholm, the shaper himself. He's gonna give you a really good breakdown of the origins of the board, the designs and its purpose. After which, I'm gonna take you out surfing here in Noosa Heads with the Slasher Low Pro. And I'm gonna give you my own personal thoughts on how this board feels, how it surfs, and everything around that. So I hope you stay tuned till the end. Let's get into it. And if you are new here, my name's Ben Considine and I'm a longboard enthusiast, a competitive longboarder and a coach. And I'm here to share my learnings and experiences like these ones today with you all. So if you do find the video valuable, if you find it useful, then please feel free to subscribe. And if you do know of anyone else who might also find it valuable, then please feel free to share it with them. But let's get straight into the edit. Well, thanks so much for doing the call, first of all. Obviously, um, on this uh, on this edit that we're doing today, we're doing the review of the Slasher Low Pro. Um, and later in the video, I'm going to be talking about my surfing and, and my impressions of it. But I thought it'd be really good to get the shaper uh, involved to see, yeah, just where it's come from and everything like that. So what, what I guess, led into the Slasher Low Pro and what were its kind of origins, I guess? The, the, the Slasher Low Pro really came about... Uh after talking to CJ, you know, obviously we've been building boards together for say 10 years and the Slasher was one of the very first boards that I made, CJ. Uh, over the time we've, we've made a number of models, uh, but what we really were always looking for was something that would serve like a high performance longboard, however, a board that you didn't tr uh, pump. We wanted this board in trim. We wanted to have speed the whole time. So something with wrap turns, nose ride like a traditional board, wrap turns like a single fin, but hold its speed. So that's what we were looking for when we were trying to design this board. I had a little surf on it this morning. It was super fun. And one of the points that I was touching on is how I usually find with some logs, you have a, a log that'll either turn really well, but then it, I guess, diminishes on the nose riding aspect or vice versa. You've got a big Californian style nose rider and then your turns are kind of slow and boggy. Yeah, what I, what I always look for is when I'm building boards, obviously, is how the surfer connects with the board. So a lot of the times we'll watch guys, for instance, on heavy traditional logs and they can nose ride, but however, mm -hmm. when they go to turn, the board's left behind a little bit. Or the opposite, when a board turns really well, the, you know, the board's in front of the surfer. So I just wanted something to connect with a surfer from their feet to their hips. So when they're wrapping turns, everything's flowing and connecting. Yeah. I just didn't want boards to be either in front of the surfer or behind the surfer. So that that's how we came up with this board. I mean, in bottom curves, ta tail rocket particularly plays a big part in this board. I have a, a, a fairly, I feel like a good idea of the, the shape and how that kind of works towards everything. But obviously I'm just the surfer. I'd love to <laughs> probably hear the, um, the proper design aspects from yourself. Um, let's talk a little bit more specifically around the design. Um, I guess a few things there, the tail, ob obviously pretty, uh, some really interesting stuff happening there towards the nose as well. Um, can you delve into that a little bit and what it's, yeah. I guess the functionality of each part of the board? For sure. Well, I mean, it's really broken up into three, three stages, tail, midsection, nose. However, what, what I did is I went back to Siege, I spoke to him over, you know, about the best boards he's had over his whole career. One of the best boards ever was actually this Pearson Arrow Nose Rider that, he, that Bob Pearson made him. We're going back 15, 20 years ago. And it had extreme tail rocker for California Outline. So I threw that part of the equation into the mix and that's how we got our tail rocker. Mm. And then the, the belly is quite flat. And then we, we blend that into a really heavy nose concave. So what the yeah. tail rocker? When boards are really flat, they tend to run really quick and outrun sections. So by putting this tail rocker in the board, we slow it up and bring it back in the pocket. So, and also obviously tail rocker allows you to wrap turns and then freeze your boards up. So yeah, it, it kind of, it's like a handbrake to an extent. However, it allows you to wrap turns. All I want to do is keep this board in the pocket. And with the big elongating, elongated concave, as you'll probably realize, yeah. It doesn't look like a nose rider, but it probably nose rides better than just about any board you've been on and that CJ's been on. Yeah, 100%. And I found that even this morning, like, 
it feels like as you're starting to walk up the board, it does, it has that really good function of, I guess, putting on the brakes a bit to kind of suck you back into the pocket. Obviously, I've been surfing some variations or some of the prototypes of these boards. Um, have uh, I've also seen some really good stuff from uh, I think it's a surf trip that Siege is doing at the moment. Who are the Who are some of the people um, that are that are on the boards at the moment? Yeah. Okay. So just one other little thing I'll throw about in that board. What we've also done with that board, different from most boards today, is we've actually got edge in it. So yeah. And the reason I'm putting edge in this board is I believe that if you don't have edge, your boards just become slow and doughy. So for guys who are surfing contests and want to surf from the pocket you need something where you can control your speed and wash off speed and drive so that's why i've got the edge in that board however going back to the the boys are on at the moment they're actually in panama of all places so we've got are they? Okay. yeah mike sordia who's zigzag surfer he's uh having a ball over there and a young kid from panama agus who is uh you know he's killing it so hey, there's some of the <laughs> Yeah, some of the guys over there, obviously you've been pretty much on the forefront of me building prototypes. Um, Jack Entwistle has been riding them. I've just actually got Kai Ellis Flint onto a couple and a few of the local guys around here, here are starting to ride them. Liam Canelli, who's making a bit of a comeback after a, you know three years absence of surfing. Yeah, Lance. Sort of, yeah, and then you've got Maddie Lumley and Ann, my wife's about to get one. And finally, I'm about to get one after building everyone else one, so. And yes, I have been riding them before. I just had to sell mine because, you know, people wanted them. So obviously being the shape of my boards come last. So yeah, that's who's sort of been on them. And, you know, we've got a fair bit of demand for them at the moment. They're, well, they're you know, they're, they're doing what we want them to do. Yeah. And am I able to say, was that, was that Soleil that was on the, she was on one for her Malibu contest as well, won the world title. Yeah. How can I forget Soleil? So Soleil was actually riding one of CJ's personals. So she got that board a week prior to uh, Malibu. She'd never ever ridden one. And we just wanted her to try it because the waves were slightly small and she, it was a 9.9. Mm. So she just clicked and gelled with that board immediately, uh, which normally takes her a bit of time to get used to boards. So Wow, and she was certainly a 9.9. Yeah, Epic. so that was a yeah. real great win for us. I mean, she's gone out and won a world title on it. She's now back on some boards built specifically for her around the 9-6 mark, which she's dialing in now. We should see her obviously in Australia in the you know, not too distant future riding some some of these boards as well. Yeah, epic, epic. Um and yeah, I guess I, I feel like it matched Soleil's surfing so well. Um at Malibu and uh, and yeah, I guess the board. I feel like it's it's really at home in the point breaks, especially here at Noosa, Posos back home, stuff like that. Um, I've, I guess outside of my impressions of it, are there any ideas you have around what sort of waves this board's suited for? Um, yeah, I mean, look, it's, it, it's still a single fin, you know, yeah. and it's still, but it's based on performance, what what we call performance longboarding or power logging. So. Mm. This is a board that's really for somebody that wants to surf in the pocket. So if you just are looking to surf flat, you know, slopey waves that are one to two foot and just rolly, I mean, it'll still work, but it's it's not really ideal for that. You know, you want to be in the pocket. So it'll work on a beach break for sure. Point breaks, yeah. sand bottom, reef bottom, just anything where there's a little, where the wave will stand up. Mm. Uh, and then you can keep wrapping into the pocket. That's when it's going to be its best. But then again, you know, I remember the first I ever built up, I saw CJ ride that in some of the worst onshore conditions I've seen. Yeah. And I pretty much blown, I mean, he blows me away all the time, but some of the surfing he was doing from that on this board showed me how versatile this board is. And I think because it's got edge and a lower rail than a normal board, it, it, it allows turns and be a lot more technical with this board. Yeah, definitely. I, I know we've had a, some personal conversations on this uh, front, so I wanted to kind of dial this into it, but how you feel like this board is, I guess, I would say paving the way a little bit for where longboarding is going, but maybe um, you would say what it's kind of trying to push in today's longboarding and where you'd like to see it going. I think everyone's got not their own opinion of, of what longboarding is. Uh, you know, you've got your HP guys and you've got your traditional single pin guys. I tend to like it all, but I, I tend to feel very hard to build one board that does everything so i think this is probably the best option around that will cover all bases so what it, what we're really trying to do with this board it is slightly focused obviously towards 
you know, contest surfing and where that's going with the WSL. But I think where the WSL is going is bringing it back a little bit more of a happy medium and it's becoming more about style and critical surfing and being basically in the pocket. So if you're not in the pocket like in contest surfing in WSL, you know, you're not going to get results. So this board allows you to sit in the pocket, become a more critical surfer. It tends to get away from that guy that's out on the shoulder, hanging 10, you know, way out on the shoulder, which realistically, you know, is kind of, that's done now. It's all about staying tight in the pocket and, and adjusting. So that's where these boards tend to go. And I think what it'll do is we'll see this year in 2024, I think we'll see a lot of the surfers who are getting through heats, they'll be changing their style to suit the WSL and boards like this, I think we'll be getting them there. I think if anyone's gonna ride a traditional heavy weighted single fin soft rail, they're just not gonna get through heats. Um, yeah. And anyone who rides anything to HP is obviously not either. So it, it suits a HP guy and it suits a traditional logger guy. So it's a happy medium. And I think that's where long, long, long boarding is at its best. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Um, I I'd agree completely and I can see that, um, you know, with the criteria with the WSL, this board does lend itself to that. And I'd probably say on top of that, just I guess personally speaking from that, uh, for my recommendations around this board, anyone who is looking to um, get more critical, get into the pocket, I do think it's gonna be a really valuable board for them um, in that way. Um, uh, again, later in the video, I'm going to talk more about it, but the amount of lifts that you can get on the nose and then how you're able to lean into those turns is a really, really valuable part of this where I guess some of the other logs um, that, that you can surf, you just have to hold your surfing back a little bit. So I feel like you can pretty much go full pelt with this. I'm 100% surfing the way that you want to be. So um, yeah, that's kind of my take on it. Well, um, yeah, in the next part of this video, we're going to go through um, yeah my surfing of the, of the Slasher Low Pro and my take on it i guess more of a kind of feel aspect how i'm gonna um yeah how i feel the board is reacting and influencing my surfing um but really really appreciate you jumping on is there anything else you would like to i guess touch on from there from that perspective or or pretty happy that I, i'm pretty happy but just quickly i think uh for those guys that you know i see obviously a lot of people surfing every day traditional longboarders pipe form longboarders and a lot of guys especially the traditional guys I see a lot of guys around our area in particular who are becoming really good nose riders, but where they're really lacking is their pocket surfing. Yeah. And I can, uh, you know, and that's because of the boards they're riding. And it, you know, I think if these guys are prepared to, and girls are prepared to try something with a tail rock or an edge, I think they'll notice their surfing, as you probably noticed, even on that latest board I've given you, how much it will improve you that quickly. So on that, I think I don't have much to say except good luck in Noosa. Thank you. And yeah. And you remember two seven, two sevens. Yeah, yeah. Chisels, chisels on me. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. All right. Well, really appreciate you jumping on. Um, yeah, board's going awesome, and we'll keep you updated. Good on you guys. Talk soon. Appreciate Thanks. It.
Uh, I wanted to speak a little bit about, I suppose, how it feels out in the water and just what I like about it. Um, as I've probably spoken about already in this video, um, I've been surfing the board like this for the past year or so. I had the original prototype that CJ um, all touches. I had the CJ and then um, another one since then. And this is the one that I've been lucky enough to have just had my first few sessions on it and brought it up here to the Noosa Festival. Um, it's going sick. It's a lot of fun out there. Um, in terms of how it feels, uh, probably the biggest thing that I've been trying to find in a board is something that does own side really well but still has that dynamic turning element to it. You may always find that there's a bit of give and take with respect to getting a board. It's either a really good nose rider which finishes its uh, biggest turning club to help with the wind, or vice versa where it's great at turning but then you can't hold those nose sides so critical. Um, this one here is probably the board that I found is closest to doing all of that. Um, so in terms of what I really like about it, firstly, um, you can probably see here with the tail, it's a pretty wild tail. Um, it's got a lot of flip through it um, and also got that sharp edge. Um, what I feel like that allows for is just for some really, really fast dynamic cars. Um, and I just feel like it's going to hold that line really, really well. I think there are a couple of good examples there. You can get a really fine tight of the pocket, nice and critical. It's a really lovely down car on it, which is super fun. Uh, but I think, yeah, with that, uh, the uh, flip in the tail, it really allows you to hold a lot of weight onto that tail as well. Usually what I'm doing with the board is I might place my foot around the back here and then a bit further forward if I'm going to be a carving turn because I feel like I need a little bit more weight to carry the momentum into the descent. But on this one, I feel like what I've been trying to do at least, is hopefully there's a couple of examples out there, um, that I'll try to hold more both feet a bit further back and actually driving the both feet a bit narrower and further back from the tail, which is super, super fun feeling. Um, and it really just feels like it's able to, I guess, carry my whole weight there and, and flow through that's been really nice. So, um, so yeah, the, the speed and power you get through your turns is epic for a lot. And then I think partly because of the tail flip function, but also um, with the, the shape of the nose, it's an incredible nose rider. These ones, I suppose, is, I feel like this board is best right in the pocket. Uh, I think the, the whole board serves really, really well inside of the pocket. Uh, if you're looking to advance your surfing steering away from the shoulder, it's definitely, definitely going to help out there. Um, so, very advanced trip for surfing is what it's going to be for. Um, for a couple of reasons, as you said, that tail flip almost acts like an anchor, um, it seems like. So, when you're cross-stepping towards the nose, um, it feels like your, your nose is actually lifting up and you're getting a lot of uh, a lot of hold and a lot of lift with that. And then we've also got the pretty big drawn out concave through the, with the nose there as well, which is really, really interesting. I feel like as you're walking through the nose, that must just slow you down a fair bit. Um, you can feel it pull you back into the critical section and then you know, I feel like the tail does all the work once you're actually on the nose to lift you up. So super fun, uh, not a lot of fun out there. The rails are super pinched as well, so it just feels super, super tight. Super uh, quick and, um, and accelerates through your treatment points as well. So, yeah, that's a little review of this one. Right.